Hello everyone. Okay, here's what I'm doing today. Uh, something a little different. This is a uh, DJI Phantom. It's uh, fairly new on the market. And uh, I've picked one up to uh, play around with. I've had a uh, Gowie here that you can see hanging here. I've had that for quite a while, but uh, have a little trouble in the wind flying it uh, manually because uh, it doesn't have GPS. But the uh, Phantom, on the other hand, does have a GPS which kind of locks it in place and uh, makes it easier to fly. So I'm testing out uh, a couple of little cameras. I've uh, tried a uh, 808 uh, keychain camera that you might have seen in uh, one of my other videos being used. I can't remember. But uh, I've picked up a uh, Mobius because the uh, resolution is so much nicer on it. As a matter of fact, they're trying to compare it to uh, a GoPro. And uh, I find it quite nice. But uh, I have trouble with what they call Jello, And that's, uh, you know, a vibration that goes through the frame and into the camera and causes some wavy lines. So... Uh, we're talking about it here on uh, uh, RC uh, groups and I'm getting some good help and uh, there's a lot of discussions about the camera and the the uh, quadcopter so that's the place to go to get all the technical information I'll uh, put a link under the video but here's what I have with the uh, with the Mobius I've uh, got the standard mount that comes with the uh, uh, Phantom, but I've put a layer of sorbethane underneath it. Now, sorbethane is a material you can buy that absorbs shock. I got this on eBay. This is an eighth of an inch thick. So I've got the uh, sorbethane material underneath the mount. I also have, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this with the being black, but I also have a layer of sorbethane here above this magnesium piece that I made. Then there's another layer of sorbethane over here underneath the camera. So I've got one, two, three layers of sorbethane, which really should help. Now the camera is, <clears throat> is held in by its uh, the mount that comes with it. You can see you can pop it loose and slide it forward and it clicks back in place so I've been doing uh, some flying and uh, trying to get some ideas to get rid of the vibration a few things that, that I've tried are of course the sorbethane that that we're talking about underneath I've uh, made cushions for the motor I made these little rubber washers and uh, put those for each underneath the motors to uh, cut down on vibration. I've I've done an upgrade uh, kit on the on the uh, bearings, uh, replaced the stock bearings with a better bearing, and it had a little uh, uh, Delrin thrust washer instead of the the um, standard uh, uh, washer that comes with the motors. So I've, but I've been trying to do just about anything I can to cut down on this vibration, and uh, I still get some. Of course, the uh, the first thing that uh, anybody does, and it makes certainly makes sense, is balance the propellers. That's probably the biggest issue that anybody's having, and uh, I've tackled that issue in a way that maybe a few haven't. I've uh, made a a special arbor. This arbor here has the same uh, keyed shape that's on the motor. And uh, I can use that then instead of one of the standard arbors that, you know, you've seen on the Dubro and this magnetic uh, uh, balancer. But let me show you something here. Just to assure you that I've got the balance right on the props. Here's my arbor on the, here's my arbor on the standard Dubro. I give it a spin. Not bad, huh? Okay. But now let's put it on a magnetic uh, base. Now, 
I've taken this magnetic base and I've put two neo magnets over the uh, stock magnets, which are ceramic. And I'm going to put the arbor on there and give it about the same twist that I did on the other one. Uh, yeah, it's spinning. So you can see that uh, we'll have a few words here before it stops spinning. And it's starting to slow down. Okay, so there you go. All right, so now this arbor I've checked carefully with, with a uh, tenth uh, indicator, and it runs within plus or minus a tenth of a thousandth. So I think that's as good as we're going to get. I'd certainly trust it before something like one of these other ones. All right, so let me put a prop on there, and we'll take a look at that. Hold on. Okay, so here we go with the prop then. I'm just going to give it a very light spin because otherwise we'll be waiting for it to slow down. So I'll just give it that much. Now this prop was balanced before on the other equipment there. Before I made this arbor. And you can see it's slowing down. Okay, now check this. It stopped and went back the other way. So, it certainly was not in balance. Alright, so, uh, let's see here. It wants to stop here on this angle of about 45 degrees. I'm going to just move it off, and we'll see what happens. As you can see, it'll slowly go back to where it was. So this prop needs to be rebalanced. And I can double check that easily by uh, or the uh, check the concentricity by turning the prop around 180 degrees and uh, it'll do the same thing one way or the other. So you can see that that's very sensitive. Now the other thing that can uh, be wrong is the balance on the uh, rotors. But that's a, a pretty major issue compared to balancing the prop because the um, the housing for the motor and the arbor that holds the prop doesn't have a hole go going all the way through it so you can't really set it up like one of these with a shaft sticking out either end so that limits you to spinning the the rotor on another bearing or using the setup over here which we all know that may not be sensitive enough. I had an issue with uh, uh, some cracking in the motor mount area which is an unusual and uh, let me give you my bit of advice on that while I'm talking about it. Do not use oil on these motors and do not use Loctite on the screws. Uh, it takes an adverse uh, reaction with the uh, with the plastics and the shell starts to crack so I've replaced that um, taken some special precautions on how the screws are tightened up and I'm starting over again so okay so we're gonna go on to some clips that I've taken here in uh, our backyard here in town and uh, then at our cottage uh, out at the lake so uh, it's some close-in flying, nothing special. Just trying, uh, trying to see what we can do with the um, with the Jello effect. What I've all right. So the clips will show you that I have more Jello in the bright scenes than I do in the uh, darker or uh, overcast skies. So I'll get onto that. We'll look at some clips and talk about them as we go. Here we go.